All right, I am back to the default configuration on my ASA. I have my Windows PC connected directly to port one, and it is getting an IP address uh, from the router, sorry, from the ASA 1.6. Uh, and that's the config we're going to, that, that's what we need to get our default configuration done. So now we are going to connect to the ASA with a browser over HTTPS. Right, put the IP address in there, 192.168.1.1. It's going to ask us a question. You may get a certificate warning. Go ahead and accept that. Um, we're going to click Install a ASDM Launcher. We're going to save the file. And then we are going to run that file to install the little launcher tool. So we'll run it. Next, next, install, yes, finish. All right, so now you need to go find wherever that tool went. And I think it went into program files, one of these two program files folders. I, I guessed correctly. Program files, x86, Cisco systems, ASDM, and then we want to run the ASDM launcher. So put the IP address of the ASA. We don't have a username or password. And hit OK. Continue and it's going to load. Which reminds me, I had tested to make sure I could connect before I started the, the, uh, before I started the uh, video. I tested, I made it sure I could connect. So, uh, just as a reminder, when I first connected with the browser, it also popped up a username a logon uh, box, and same thing. No username, no password, because we did not set that yet. So just hit enter and it'll get you to this page and then you can download and install. So that actually worked pretty well, better than it used to. Used to we have to we used to have to mess around with certificates in Java, but I guess Java has been updated to make our lives easier. So this is a uh, GUI tool for managing the firewall. We've been doing things um, at the command line. I like the command line because it's simple, uh, but the GUI does have some benefits. So couple different things to look at. There's a configuration tab and a monitoring tab. We're going to be doing most of our work on the configuration uh, tab. And on the configuration tab, there's a couple different areas. We have some things where we could manually go through and set things if we, if we were smart enough for that. We also have uh, some different areas down here, basic device setup, firewall, some VPN stuff, uh, and device management. We're mostly going to be working in device setup, firewall, and possibly in device management. So a couple different uh, things we need to worry about. Uh, we are going to run through the startup wizard. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to, we can modify existing configuration because we are already at the factory default config. Um, we're not going to configure that. We're going to leave the host name the same, domain name the same. We can set a password, set it to something, set it to class. So actually we don't have an old password. Set the password to class so that I can get in when you forget to clear the password. Um, we are not going to configure a DMZ VLAN, so make sure you uncheck, you, you put do not configure because we do not have a, a, a DMZ VLAN. Uh, we don't have licensing, sorry, to allow that. You shouldn't need to uncheck that since we're not configuring it. I don't know why I did, but I'm going to do that anyway. We want port 0 to be in the outside VLAN, the rest of the ports to be in the inside VLAN, so we'll, we'll leave that as it is. Um, outside IP address, we are going to set it to a IP address in our public subnet. I'm going to go with 99. Dot, I'm going to go with 99. Dot, I don't know what I want to do here. I'm tempted to say use the same thing you have on your router, but that might cause some issues with us for ARP. So I'm going to say use a different unused IP address that you have not yet used in your network. So I'm going to use 99.20. Uh, mask is going to be 27. Right On the inside IP address, this was where I told you guys you need to make up a new uh, subnet in your, in your public in your, in your private network space that's not being used, and I suggested you do something like this. 10.1.1.253 uh, .1 on the ASA, and we'll put 10.1.1.254 on the router. So, I'll go with that. 
Um, we are not going to be doing DHCP on the ASA. Seems like it complained if we did not delete these IPs out, even if we did uncheck that. So we want to uncheck that and delete those IPs out of there because uh, I think it complained. We are going to use port address translation and we're going to use the IP address on the outside interface. We are going to want to allow connections to ASDM, but again, for now, we are going to allow connections from anywhere to make our lives easier. Because we spend far too much time in some labs uh, trying to get connected to our stuff. It's enabled. Next. This gives us a summary. We're going to hit finish. And when we hit finish, it's going to deliver those commands to the ASA and give the command give the ASA uh, this configuration. So we want to for a moment consider what's going to happen when we do this. We currently have the IP address 192.168.1.6. We are currently connected to the IP address 192.168.1.1. Once uh, this, these commands are delivered to the ASA, the ASA's inside interface is going to become 10.1.1.253. So if we are directly connected to the ASA with the IP address 192.168.1.6 and the ASA's IP address changes to 10.1.1.253, will we be able to connect to it without making some other changes locally? The answer is no, we will not be able to connect to it without making some other changes locally. And it is entirely likely that my uh, connection is going to uh, time out or die from my um, Mac to the Windows PC I'm using configuration so I might be gone for a little while and then come back uh, to finish the config so let's go ahead and hit finish and see what happens so this pops up and says please wait while the ASDM is delivering commands to the device and if if you were not listening to what I just said you might sit here for a while thinking man this is taking forever well the ASA wants to report back to the ASDM that it has finished but it can no longer do that because it is no longer on the same subnet with the same IP address. So we are going to let that go for a moment and then we will just close out of ASDM altogether. All right, so it seems like my console connection is still working. Uh, so we're gonna look at the running config to make sure what we did was delivered. So we look at our config, I now have the inside has 10.1.1.253, the outside is 99.99.20. So, so that's good. So, so we're, we're close to what we want to have on our config. If you remember from lab 3, we need to add some routes uh, to make this work. So we're going to go ahead and add the route we need before we start making the rest of our configuration changes we need to make. So we need to add a route for... Um, we want to send it to the inside interface and we want to do it for 10.1.1.0 and then a 24 what? a 24 bit subnet mask ah, I can't type and then we want to send it to the IP address that we are going to put on the router the router does not have this IP address yet Remember we gave the ASA 253 with a 30-bit mask. We're going to give the router 254 with a 30-bit with a mask. So that's the route we are going to need for this to work um, uh, properly. And I do believe that that is the last uh, thing we need to do uh, to the ASA for right now. So I'm going to move the console cable over to the router because now we make some changes on our router. So... Bear with me while I physically relocate my console cable to the router. All right, so if we look, if we, we review uh, our config on the router, we have a public IP on the router. We're going to want to change that uh, to be that 10.1.1.254. We are also still doing NAT on the router. We want to get rid of those NATs because we are going to be doing NAT on the ASA now, and then we also want to change our route on our router. So those are the things that I'm of the opinion that we need to change on the router. So I'll go ahead and do some of those things. So we'll get rid of the access list. 
So I got rid of the access list. We'll get rid of the NAT commands. Technically speaking, if um, if there's no references to some of these commands, then it doesn't matter if they're still there, but I like for us to just get rid of them to make our lives a little easier. And eliminate some of the confusion we might run into uh, if we're troubleshooting and we have extra commands in there and we're not sure which ones which ones might be causing problems and which ones might not be causing problems. So if we don't need it, let's just get rid of it. No IP NAT inside. Yep. Inside. Dynamic mapping and use. Do you want to delete all entries? Yes. So what that means is there might be some existing NATs that have not timed out yet and we want to get rid of those because we are no longer doing NAT on the router. Um, so that took care of the NAT stuff. We'll get rid of the default route. All right, we'll go into the uh, sub interfaces and do no IP NAT inside. Like I said, if there's no con NAT config, it probably doesn't matter if it's there, but for ease of troubleshooting, config readability, not confusing the crap out of ourselves, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that stuff. Um, I, we're going to go to FA00, no IP NAT outside. So we're going to change the IP address of our router to be 10.1.1.254 with a 20, 30 bit net mask. 2030 And we now want to add, re add our new default route to point to the ASA. <sighs> so, what the heck? Oh, I forgot to put IP. IP route. And it's supposed to be 253. Awesome. So if we look at what we did, we got rid of the access list, we got rid of the NAT commands, uh, we got rid of the no IP NAT inside on the interfaces, no IP NAT outside on the outside interface, we changed the outside interface IP address, and we added a new default route. So I think that is all we need to do, but I'm going to verify that by looking at my running config. So 10.1.1.284. We have a default route to the ASA and we don't have the NAT stuff anymore. So at this point, I need to go reconfigure some cabling uh, to move my uh, PC that is currently connected to the ASA back into VLAN 3 where it needs to go. And I need to move my router public interface back into port one on the ASA. So I'm gonna do those things and then reset up my connections so that we can uh, continue recording. So I'll be back.